The Bucerus Police Department has enacted a program entitled Operation Hope, which focuses on serving local families in the community that are struggling with addiction. Thanks guys, so Aaron Thompson is a big defensive presence. He averages seven rebounds per game, and when this guy gets on fire, he really is a rebounding and defense machine. Thanks guys, so we are celebrating 100 years of men's basketball here at Ashen University inside Kate's Gymnasium today. From the Center for the Arts studio, this is your AU TV 20 sports break. I'm Brooke Young. Thanks for tuning in. Hi there, and welcome to this episode of The Eagle's Eye. I'm your host, Brooke Young. That concludes this episode of today's Eagle Eye. Again, I'm your host, Brooke Young. The Bucerus Police Department has enacted a program entitled Operation Hope, which focuses on serving local families in the community that are struggling with addiction. We talked to Police Chief Kepke in Santana Stanford for more details. It became very clear that arresting our way out of the problem wasn't really possible. Operation Hope aims to help addicts reclaim their lives. The Bucyrus Police Department says they have arrested drug dealers and removed drugs from the streets. But the next step to solving the drug issue is to help those that are struggling with addiction. There's people that just need help. They just need to beat addiction. So uh, Police Assisted Addiction Recovery Initiative is a national program and we decided in Bucyrus that we would give it a try. Through numerous events such as Hope Over Heroin and Unity in the Community, the department has reached out to those struggling with addiction. The publicity of the events has led other addicts to reach out and seek help. And back in uh, November of 2016, we, there was one large event that where over 40 people actually came forward and asked for help. And since that time now, it's over 200 people have asked for help as we stand here today. It's one example of the philosophy of there's an in inevitability if you're in addiction or involved in criminal activity you will go to jail and it, many people have died from addiction so in the meantime uh, someone that wants help can make a choice of hope over handcuffs or it's been called also safe pass passages where you can go to a place like our police department and actually meet someone like my friend here who wants to help you so are the angel program because these people in our community are angels they they're actually helping save lives by helping local residents operation hope has already gained trust in the community allowing more partnerships like north central state college in the local court system the organization says that the impact is already apparent all of this impacts our community because one we're seeing crime drop um, we're seeing I mean, the drugs are still there, but they're not as much, and more people are reaching out. So that fear of, oh, I'm going to walk into a police department to get help. No, I'm going to go to jail. It's not there. They know when they come here um, that they're going to get the help that they need, and they're going to have a team of people that's going to be there to support them and secure a place for them that can allow them to thrive in their recovery. Operation Hope already has a long-term goal in mind one that will increase their reach in the overall community. Our goal with Operation Hope, our long-term goal is to open up our own detox and treatment facility as well as sober livings, um, just so that we can walk them from step one all the way through, um, just so we know where they're at and how they're doing. Operation Hope, which was originally acting independently, is now a 501c3, which will allow the program to grow in order to help more individuals. For WMFD News, I'm Brooke Young. Local students at Clear Fork Middle School banded together to make their science teacher's dream come true. I spoke to Kelly Staley and one of her students about this experience. So I've been teaching for seven years in seventh grade and the content we have to teach is weather and climate, the difference in all the tools. And so for some reason I've been telling them for the last seven years that my dream job would be a chief meteorologist and I joke and say that I could be on WMFD. So as I was saying this to this year's class, uh, one of my students said, Mrs. Staley, I want your dreams come true, so can I call them? And I'm like, no, you can't call them. And then he did call call them and he spoke very well and now here we are. It was kind of just like a light bulb in my head because I like to do stuff for people and I was just like okay I'm gonna make this come true. Knowing her and how she wanted to, how that was her really dream job and I figured well you know what we're gonna make this come true and I really like talking to people and stuff so it's kind of easy for me so I could go through 
and try to get her that job for the day. And I w really wanted to say no, but I mean, it was a realistic question. And um, uh, Mason Wade did a great job talking to Sarge, I believe, for WMFD. So I said, okay, let's give it a try. And then he, when he gave me a call, then I knew it was serious. <laughs> <laughs> so my cl morning classes, uh, we did the fake weather report uh, <laughs> where we talk about the weather, the precipitation, temperature, and try to add things in. And the students then critiqued me and told me I needed to smile more. Some said, I needed to talk louder um, and then they told me good things that I was doing as well so I've been practicing. <laughs>guys so Drew Novo really came out on fire tonight on the offense side on the defense side talk about how he is such a huge component of this game thanks guys so you guys brought this right down to the wire at the very end talk about how the equal defense kept this game so close with Brooke Young thank you hi nice to meet you so your team was really unfazed and consistent throughout the night talk about their performance and how they were able to step out with this huge victory Thanks, guys. So, Andy Groshek is only a freshman. She comes off that bench averaging 10 points, and you saw how what an asset she was tonight. Can you just talk about her performance and what she means to this team? Andy's From the Center for the Arts studio, this is your AU TV 20 Sports Break. I'm Brooke Young. Thanks for tuning in. The Ashland University men's basketball team won its crucial regular season finale on Thursday night, beating host Wayne State 83-63 in Detroit, where senior center Drew Noble scored a season-high 30 points. With the win, the Eagles secured their spot in the GLIAC tournament and will play in the quarterfinal on Tuesday, March 3rd, on the road against Grand Valley State. Ashland will be the number seven seed in the conference tournament. The Eagles finished the regular season by winning nine of their last 11 games after starting the GLIAC season with a 1-8 and eight record. Look at the girls' side. Ashland junior forward McKinley Mindenhall earned first team honors in Division I. Mindenhall led the Arrows with 17 goals on the season. The junior forward also handed out eight assists. And that's it for this AU TV 20 sports break. Be sure to follow us across social media at AU TV 20. I'm Brooke Young. Thanks for tuning in. You have the opportunity to go to the USATF Outdoor Championships and you placed 13th in the nation in the 400 hurdles. Tell me about that whole experience and what that was like. Hi there, and welcome to this episode of The Eagle's Eye. I'm your host, Brooke Young. And today I'm here with Lynn Miller, a therapy dog volunteer, as well as a cancer mole mastiff named Atlas, and he's a therapy dog volunteer himself. Thank you so much for being with us here today. I would say that my favorite part is knowing that we did something collectively as a whole that I was able to bring people together to combat the isolation of this time. Seniors She's who are isolated in care facilities, unable to visit their friends and family, unable to really access the internet as many of us do and look for our engagement online. And then I kind of had this idea that, you know, letter writing was popular in a different era. Maybe we could bring that back in sort of a contemporary way. The book came from my inspirations that I had serving with my real life therapy dog. Her name was Molly and we actually served in this local area at Oak Grove Manor, which many people may recognize. We spent about five years visiting with those residents at the nursing home and cultivating really amazing friendships.